Hello, I'm Aline Crooks and welcome to FD54 Reversible Jacket Sample. This jacket you can use a medium weight linen on the top and a lining or you can use two colors of cotton. What you'll need to do before you get started is to have your lining pieces the lining pieces cut out from the lab. You're going to need one back, two fronts, two sleeves, and then you'll also need these pieces. You'll also need the same pieces cut out of a different type of fabric. So you can, I've selected a linen, so I have two sleeves of the linen. And then I have one back. And two fronts. And I'm going to match them at the shoulders because the first step would be to sew a half inch seam at the shoulders. You're going to sew both sets. When you're done sewing the shoulder seams together, this is when you want to press, oops, press the seams open. You'll also do the linen part after you've done the lining. So you want both shoulder seams or all four shoulder seams pressed open.
Since this is a lined garment, there's no need to finish the raw edges of your seam allowance. because all the raw edges will be inside and nothing will be exposed. After we're done pressing, it's time to sew the sleeves. So we'll lay this out and we're gonna sew the sleeves onto both the lining and the self fabric. Um, when you look at the sleeves, you notice there's a different shape of the cap. You want the steeper side of the curve to be towards the front of the garment, and that would be the piece where you have the opening. So we're going to start at the front, down in the corner with the sleeve on top. And all the seam, well, half inch seam allowance. Now, when easing in the cap, you do not want to pull, you just want to guide it. And then you can pinch a little bit of ease into the cap up towards the top. But you don't want to pull your sleeve. This will stretch it and then you'll, you'll wind up having your sleeve too big for the armhole. The other side, we'll turn it around. This time we're starting in the back, so you're going to have the more shallower end of the curve facing the back. We're going to start with a half inch seam allowance. Again, we don't want to pin. You want to work the layers independently. So I'm not pulling my sleeve. I'm guiding it and setting it on top. We want to be able to move it around and work ease into the cap. That completes the self layer. You set that aside. We'll finish the sleeves on the lining. This is done in the same manner. You want the shallow side of the curve to be facing towards the back. half inch seam allowance.
And as I go, I'm only lining up maybe an inch ahead of the presser foot. Okay, this completes the top of the lining. We've sewn the shoulder seam and the sleeve to the armhole. Once we've completed this, now it's time to match it on top of the self fabric. I'm gonna lay the lining on top. And here's a point where we can pin. If you feel you have to, we can pin the bottom hems together. So we'll pin the bottom. the bottom of the sleeves together. And I'm matching this at the bottom of the sleeves, the bottom of the back of the jacket, bottom of the sleeves again, and then also we're going to match it at the bottom of the front around the center front opening and then around the neckline. Do not sew the sides yet. You don't need a lot of pins. I'm just going to match it at the critical points. That would be the corners. For the neck, you want to do the corners. and then the shoulder seams. So you want to make sure that the seam, your seam allowance is pressed open.
So once you have your garment or the reversible jacket pinned, we can start sewing the bottoms or the bottom hem and the neckline. I usually like to start in this corner along the sleeve, so I'll start this side, come across, do this sleeve, come across the bottom, and then come up this side of the center front around the neckline, around the neckline, and then sew down and finish off at this corner. This is all a half inch seam allowance, single needle. And you want to take out your pins as you go. To make the sewing go a little quicker, you can line up the next seam, push it under the presser foot, back tack, Okay, when we get to the center front seam, you want to put in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So all along the bottom, we've been making a half inch seam allowance. Here's where it's kind of tricky. You want to sew in a little bit more to where we can have a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the center front. Leave your needle down, lift your presser foot, and then you would turn, line it up with the first, your first mark. That'll give you a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna do a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the center front, both center front, neck, the neck, We can walk it into the neckline too. Now when you turn a corner, you want to make sure that your needle's in and you raise your presser foot. This marks your place. Now the other side, still a quarter of an inch. Now 
Now here's where we want to stop a half inch and turn. So we want to stop a half inch from the bottom, turn by lifting our presser foot, leaving the needle down and turning the fabric and lining it up with the second mark on our throat plate. Good. Then now we can clip the other threads and clip it apart. So we've sewn the sleeve hems, the back hem, the front hems, center fronts, and the neckline. Now it's time to sew the sides. And the sides are done a little bit differently. What we're going to do is you're going to pick up one of the sleeve sides and we're going to match it We're going to pull it through and create a circle. So we're sewing up the sides of our garments. Now, one of these sides we're going to sew all the way around the circle. The other side we're going to leave open at the sleeve. What we can do now is match our seams You want to have the seam under the arm pressed open and this you can do by finger pressing you just hold it open, kind of press it down, and then pin this. Same on the other side where the self fabric is. So we'll press this open, match the underarm seam. By sewing it this way, it reduces bulk so that we don't get a big bunch of fabric under the underarm seam. Now the side that go towards the bottom hem, what I've done is I've turned those towards the lining. So you want to turn the seam allowances towards the lining. Now we can start at one of the lining, or excuse me, we can start at one of the bottom, bottom sleeve of the self. And this is a half inch seam allowance. And this will feel like you're sewing a tube. So it should be a circle.
So this is one side. We'll move to the other. And this is where you kind of pull it through the top and you create the circle. Now because we need a space to turn the jacket through, we're going to leave three inches open for the sleeve. You want to leave a pretty good opening. You don't want to go less than about two or three inches because then it gets hard to turn and everything gets caught through the hole. So you want to make sure you leave a big enough hole to turn the jacket. You want to do it where you have it under the arm because it's an inconspicuous place and when you make this full size you're not going to see it when you're wearing it. Again we'll turn the seams towards the lining. Same thing on the other that we did on the other side. You're going to bust open the seam at the armhole and you want to pin those Again, I've only used pins and critical points. This time I'm going to start at one of the pins up here where I'm going to leave my opening. So I'm going to start at one end of my opening and I'm going to finish up here. Half inch seam allowance. Again, if it seems like you're sewing a tube, you've done it right. Okay, so you have 
your tube with your opening on this side and then another circle or tube on the other side. It should look like the sleeves are coming together and then the linings connected down at the bottom. We can go back to where our hole is here in the sleeve and start turning our jacket. Oops. But before you turn, what you're going to want to do is clip the corners of center front. There's no reason to clip the neckline if you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you have a really steep one, you can go in there, maybe clip and release some of, of the ease and clip out the seam allowance. But it should roll with only a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So we'll clip our corners. If you have really bulky fabric, you can clip out some of the fabric at the side seams also. Now back to our hole in our sleeve and we're ready to turn. You want to be careful when you do this. You really don't want to shove a pencil or anything like that in there because a lot of times you'll put a hole in your jacket. Just take your time. Um, three inches should be a big enough hole. If you go smaller than that, it's, it will get stuck and it'll take a lot longer time to turn. Kind of see it now. <laughs> and see how it's turned everything to the inside. Everything's finished off nice and clean. You can go back, kind of pull the points out, press them flat.
Now when you go back and press this, you want to make sure you roll. When you go back and press it, you want to make sure you roll the edges so the lining's on the inside. So when your jacket's all nice and pressed, you can go back to close it up. You can find where you stitched your, or you left your hole. You go back to where you left your hole and you turned your jacket. You can either sew this up by hand or you can sew it up by machine. If you choose to do it by machine, what you'll do is you can find the hole, kind of match it, tuck your threads in, Use a couple of pins. And you can top stitch the hole closed. You want to make sure that you get right on the edge clip your threads and then stitching this down this completes the reversible jacket for FD-54. So once you're done, you have a completed reversible jacket with no raw seams showing.